I've never been brand conscious. I always appreciate a brand for what it is. That's why I ended up putting my money on a cherry. And I'm happy with that decision. But I understand that most of you are brand conscious. And will not listen or give a chance to anything with an unfamiliar badge. Worse when it's coming from China. I think it's time to give these new cars a chance. Because they are really making a statement. By giving us what you only find in luxurious brands like Audi and Mercedes. At an affordable price. Imagine how much you would pay for this car if it had an Audi or a Mercedes bench in front. I'm sure it would double the figure. There's much to cover in this video. We'll look at the car's design, interior and exterior. I will share with you some of its features and finally we'll discuss its cost of ownership. So without further ado, you're watching Cars24 and welcome to this video. There are only two cars that are being offered by bike at the moment, which is this Beijing X55 and the B40 Offroader. This Beijing is offered in three trims. You get the base model Dynamic, mid-spec is the Elite, and topping the range is this Premium. Design-wise, you get the same look regardless of the trim. In front, you get a futuristic design with these LED headlights and LED daytime running lights. This car gets a unique black front bumper with integrated small lights in it. I like this front end. It's clean, sharp, and futuristic. The side profile has a coupe body shape with its sloping roof toward the tail end. You get electric side mirrors and these seamless door handles. When closed, they make the side profile of this car look clean. This base model Dynamic get this 18-inch aluminum alloy wheels. These 19-inch alloy wheels are available on the Elite and the Premium. This is about the only difference you get between these cars as far as the exterior design is concerned. The back of this car is gorgeous and stylish. You get a nicely designed roof spoiler, LED tail lights with integrated rear fork lamps, and the Beijing badging in between. At the bottom, you get rear parking sensors and a nice fake diffuser. Overall, I like this car's exterior design. It's futuristic, stylish, and very clean. Does the interior live up to the exterior design? Let's check it out. There's one thing I like about Cherry and Haval. Their interiors are very good, and this Beijing is no different. They understood the memo. Not only does it look good, it's well built as well. You get premium soft touch material on the dashboard, and the overall quality of material used in this car is very good. I like this leather wrap multifunction steering wheel with all your control buttons and nice red stitching. You get this instrument panel with very good displays and has all your driving information. On the side is this infotainment screen. It kinda look disconnected from the instrument cluster. But anyways, this screen is very nice and everything in this car is controlled here. And let me show you how. You have your driving modes there, which are comf, echo, sports and smart. And this lends your driving behavior. I like the sound it gives you when you press sports. You have ambient lighting on the door panels with up to 10 different color options to choose from. Just check it out, very nice. Blue is my favorite color here. This tab here is your shortcut to your different driving modes. And down here you have your automatic climate control center, which are not dual zone. Most people may find this annoying, having to use the infotainment screen to operate the aircon but I think you get used to it over time. You have heated seats, both driver and passenger, and this feature is really nice, especially in winter. Overall, the system is responsive and the displays are very good. I like it. On the sensor console, you have an area for your wireless mobile charging, a cup holder, a stylish gear knob with an electric parking brake, and you have an armrest with a refrigerated sensor console pin. And inside it, you have a 12 volt socket and a USB port. Another USB port in front is located here, underneath this high mounted floating sensor console with a massive storage area, and you get an average size glove box.
they have decided to put the hazard button in the strangest of location in the attempt to keep the dashboard buttonless as possible. But this thin borderline rear view mirror is beautiful. Just look at it. Very nice. On the premium trim, you get this Lamborghini Aureus inspired sport seats, which are heated, ventilated, and have memory. On the Dynamic and Elite, you get these seats, which also look nice, but all the best trying to keep them clean. Both driver and passenger seats on the Elite and Premium have a six-way electric adjustment. Only the Dynamic has a manual adjustment. The Elite and Dynamic also get this huge panoramic sunroof as standard, and it goes all the way to the back. Moving on to the back seat, space is not a problem at all. You have huge amounts of knee room and leg room. You get this extra storage behind both front seats. You have two rear air vents and a single USB port for your back passengers. An armrest with two open cup holders is available. And if you have a child, you get two sets of isofix anchor points for your child seat. The boot of this car has an electric tailgate and can be opened from the infotainment screen. There is a very decent amount of boot space and it's flat as you can see. You have a 12 volt socket here, an extra storage compartment on either side and you have an extra compartment area underneath which houses your space saver spare wheel. I like the fact that you can fold your back seat from up here if you need some extra space. This X55 has a 60-40 split and this increases your boot carrying capacity massively as you can see. Anyways, you can open the boot from back here like in most normal cars. In terms of safety, you get 6 airbags as standard. You also get anti-lock brake system, electronic brake force distribution, emergency braking assist, electronic parking brake, auto hold, and electronic stability program. The X55 is offered with a 5-year or 150,000 km warranty, a 5-year unlimited km roadside assistance, and unfortunately the service plan is only optional. I think many manufacturers will adapt this method in future. Now moving on to the engine, underneath the bonnet is a 1.5 litre 4 cylinder turbo petrol engine that put out 130 kilowatts and drives in 5 newton meters of torque. It does this through front wheels. This engine is mated to the 7 speed dual class transmission. The claim fuel consumption figure is around 7.8 litres 200 kilometers, but real world fuel consumption figure is likely to be somewhat higher than this. Now on to the last part of this video. The part you've all been waiting for, the cost of ownership for this car. The base model Dynamic has a starting price of 420900 the Elite is priced at 450900 and the top of the range premium starts from 480900 When this car first came out last year, it had a starting price of 394900 and the top of the range was priced at around 454900 That's a 26000 price increase in a space of one year. Anyways, let's say you want to buy the top of the range premium because you like nice things. Price is 480900 over 72 months at an interest rate of 11.75% with no balloon rate deposit. This car will cost you around 9431 rands per month if you add 1000 for your full tank and 2000 for insurance. This will take your monthly cost of ownership for this car to around 12431 rands per month. Now, what's my final verdict of this car? This X55 didn't have the same grand entrance that Jolion and the Tico 4 Pro had, but it's still a great product. It's well specced and priced. Solely based on its exterior and interior design, a lot of people who like premium things will be impressed. I'm already impressed. 
that's it for this video make sure you leave a like and subscribe to this channel for more good content like this until next time peace